What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Today we are taking a look at Transformers Generations Voyager Class Roadbuster, otherwise known as the dude with all the guns. I and mean, seriously, this guy has like eight different guns. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six different guns. Okay, that's six, it's not eight. I am once again using my Lazy Susan because as I said in a previous review, the poor turntable of mine has met a fiery demise. Robot mode for this guy is really nice. It's a very interesting and stark tr contrast to the complexity and more organic nature and overall nuttiness that was Skybite. As opposed to that, we have this nice blocky G1 inspired figure that just feels more like a traditional Transformer. All of the weapons are removable and he looks better with the weapons than without. I'll show you that here in a minute. But overall, he is a very nice looking robot mode. There are a few minor issues that I have with him, but we'll get into that in a minute. So let's go ahead and get up close with the figure. Up close Roadbuster looks menacing. I mean, that head sculpt is definitely an evolution of his G1 head sculpt, but it is just menacing. I like it a lot. It kind of reminds me of a, of a G.I. Joe character for some... I know what it reminds me of. It reminds me of Bane from the third Batman movie. That's what it reminds me of. I've been trying to figure out why, why this thing looks so familiar. That's what it is. Oi, it just looks gnarly. The figure without his weapons still looks really good, but I like him better with all of his weapons. I just think he's cooler. Posability is very good in the upper torso. We'll, we'll talk about the legs in a bit. Head is on a swivel, ratchets plenty in the shoulders, though you do have to be careful as this shoulder bit feels like it could break. His shoulders actually have molded hydraulics in his underarm, which is very, very cool. Swivel underneath that, and double ratchets in the elbows. No real torso articulation to speak of due to the transformation. And then we'll talk about the legs. The legs, plenty of bend in the knees. Feet are poseable, though they do look like they can ratchet back and forth. And there are hinges here in the back part of the transformation that you can get some poses out of. Now, his hips, nice, good sounding ratchets forward and back. In and out, nothing. There are ratchet clips here, but neither of the legs ratchet. In fact, you can make him do the splits. It's real weird. I think I might just have a defective unit. It actually doesn't affect him all that much. It does affect him standing a little bit. You just gotta be, you just gotta work with him a little bit. But it's just weird that he's completely missing ratchets in the hips. The other thing I do have a little bit of an issue with are the uh, heels. As in, he really doesn't have any. That little bit of heel isn't really enough to keep him from falling backwards sometimes. But then again, if I didn't suck at posing him, I wouldn't have that problem. Roadbuster's transformation is way easier than Skybite's. To start off with, we'll take the arms and actually fold the arms up into the shoulders a little bit by collapsing the double hinge at the elbows, then turning the arms to face skyward like that. Take the chest, first make the head, sure the head is pointing straight forward, take the chest to fold it up over the head, then take the shoulders and they will fold up underneath the abdomen or fill in the abdomen. And then the fists will peg into the side here. But before you do that, you need to flip out these green sections here that actually are by the winch. So they will peg in like so. Get that lined up, push that in, flip that up and peg it in like that. So that's the front of the vehicle mode. Then the rear is folding out the tires. Take the hip feet and turn them so that he walks like a duck and then fold at the ratchets bring the feet together and then the whole section will bend at the knees and that will fold up into the vehicle mode and everything will peg in together nice and tight 
And there we have his freaking awesome vehicle mode. Roadbuster's vehicle mode is a vehicle that I need to have in real life. It's kind of like a cross between an armored Humvee and a Baja pickup truck. It's freaking awesome. I absolutely love this alt mode. And it just looks cool. He's got these giant engine or thrusters off the back. It just looks absolutely menacing. And it's something I wish I had in real life. Just this vehicle mode is so cool. The only thing that can make the vehicle mode even better is weapons. Lots of weapons. I, I love, I, I, I adore. The only thing that can make this vehicle mode any better is all of his weapons. Just, just put the guns everywhere. Just, just go ahead and do it. Oh man, I love this vehicle mode. It's, it's just so awesome. And let's face it, if I was driving this every day, if I had a bad day at work, by the time I get home, I would be so much happier because, well, who's going to get in my way? I mean, seriously. Roadbuster is one of those generation figures that just pretty much nails every aspect of what I wanted out of a reimagined version of a G1 figure. It's not perfect, and what I mean is there are some weird issues, like the, the hips issue is just strange. I've never seen a figure that has a ratchet that doesn't, that they don't work, period. But otherwise, the figure's fine. There are some things you do need to be concerned about, like I do worry that certain parts might break go over time, and yeah, it's n not the most, I would say, elegant figure, but I mean, the dude's covered in guns. You don't need elegance when you have guns, or that many guns, anyway. Overall, Roadbuster is just a solid figure and really should be part of your generation's collection. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video review of Transformers Generations Voyager Class Roadbuster. He is definitely a bot to get. As always, I've been Ball Matrix, and I'll catch you next time.